A couple of years ago, a couple reached out to me regarding various shaylas that they had had. And after meeting with them a couple of times, it became apparent that they were struggling with infertility. I added them to my Tehillim list. Of course, they were davening for themselves. But after a number of years had passed and they still did not have children, the couple sat with me and they painfully said that they sort of feel like they're talking to the wall. They said, we feel like we're davening and just nobody's listening. This idea was very painful to hear and I internalized it. Yet what else can you do other than daven? A few months later, I was sitting down and I was reading, learning my favorite sefer in the world, Lev Eliyahu by Revel Yelapian. And Revel Yelapian writes over there, he says, I want to share with you a secret, a concept, which is not well known, but I'm going to reveal it to you now. And at some point in your life, maybe you'll be able to tap into this secret that I'm about to reveal to you. And I got very intrigued and started reading this further. And Revel Yelapian says, that when Klal Yisrael shows up to the Yamsuf, they start to daven because they're trapped. In front of them is the Yamsuf, behind them are the Egyptians. And Hashem very famously says the words to Moshe, Ma titzak Why are you davening to me? Daver of Yisrael of Yisrael, tell the Jewish people that they should travel. And Revel Yelapian asks, what kind of a question is that? Ma titzak why are you davening to me? Of course you daven. When a Jew is in a position of pain, he davens. When you're happy, you daven. You daven, you always daven. Ma titzak why are you davening? What kind of a question was Hashem asking Moshe? And Rebbe Yelapian says, I'm going to share with you a ruz, a secret, as to how the world was created. He says, every time, a person davens for anything, it immediately puts together a court case up in Shemayim. You could be looking for a parking spot and you, you're davening, you're like, Hashem, please, I need a parking spot. I have, I'm running late to my appointment. And right away, there is a court case that, sits, that gets established. And the malachim come running. The good malachim start advocating for you. Give him a parking spot. Give her the parking spot. The bad malachim come along and they say, nah, 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 this person doesn't belong in this parking spot. They don't deserve it. They speak Lashon Hara, they do Averas, they do terrible things. And the malachim fight it out until the gavel comes down. And there's a psak. This person deserves or does not deserve the parking spot. Every time in our lives that we daven for something, we don't realize it, but there's like this mini court case that happens super fast up in Shemayim. Says Revel Yelapian that when Klal Yisrael stood there by the Yamsuf, the court case began. And there were Malachim that came and said, Hashem, you created the world for Yisrael. Bishvil Yisrael, Shanik Roreshes. You have to do something here to save them. And then there were Malachim that came along and they started being Makatrik. They started coming out against Klal Yisrael and they said to Hashem, Halal loivdei avay dezara. The Egyptians, they serve idols. The Jews, they also serve idols. What's the difference between them? Why should you save the Jews? And Hashem turns to Moshe and He says to him, Moshe, Ma titzak Stop davening. Because you are about to lose this court case. You're going to get Klai Yisrael killed. Stop davening for just a minute. And Moshe says to Hashem, If I don't have tefillah, what do I have? And Hashem says to him, Daber Obnei Yisrael, so. Speak to the Jewish people and they shall travel. Rav Eliyahu says, that was a coded message. The message goes that the world is created with Teva, with nature. And if you play within the world of nature, then there's good and there's bad and there's merits and there's demerits. But sometimes, if you push yourself past your nature, then Hashem, as it will, doesn't have the choice but to bend nature. Hashem says to Moshe, right now you're in a very precarious situation. Daber el b'nei Yisrael v'yiso, speak to the Jewish people to push themselves, to do something that's hard for them. Show an insane amount of emuna, of bitachon. Do something out of the ordinary 
and then I will be compelled to do something in reciprocation. Out of the ordinary, that's not normal. And Nachshon ben Aminadav goes ahead and he jumps into the water, which was a, an unnatural occurrence. And the water started saying, hold on, hold on, I don't necessarily want to move for these people. Until the water sees Yosef. Yosef bent his nature with Eshes Potiphar. And the water just had no choice. It had to move. And Revelle Lapian says that if you ever feel like your tefillos are stuck, bend your nature. Bend your nature, do something that's a little out of the ordinary for you, something that's a little hard for you, and you will see that you will access something in the heavens that you naturally cannot access. I saw this vart and I internalized it a lot. And from then on, I started thinking in my own life about various things that are maybe a little harder, but maybe I could push myself to do. And I've been thinking about this for a number of months. And then this couple called me up and they said, we have a Shaila. Question, there's this mitzvah that we can do. It's gonna take us about 15 hours to do this mitzvah. It's like a weird opportunity that came our way. Part of us is thinking we should do it. Part of it is thinking that we should not do it. What do you think about this? I was like, listen, I'm not a Makubal. I don't know much about, you know, the hidden parts of the, of the world. But let me share with you an idea. And I had told them what I had recently learned about from Reveille Lapian. I said, listen, what's the worst that's going to happen? You'll do a really incredible mitzvah. You have nothing to lose. Give it a shot. This couple went, they did this mitzvah, 15 hours, something that's not normally done. They called me about a month later. I said, how are you? What's your shayla? And the woman, with tears in her eyes, she says, we wanted to thank you because after seven and a half years of being married, we're pregnant. The whole world stopped at that moment for me. And I was like, wow, we're sitting on this amazing, amazing piece of knowledge that we have to, we have to spread to the world. We have to tell people about this because it sort of transcends conventional, conventional knowledge. A couple years later, I was giving a speech and I spoke about this idea by the speech. After the speech, a guy comes over to me and he says, Rabbi, I want to share with you my story. I said, okay, let me hear. So he says, I was struggling in Shadokim, having a hard time, little down on my luck, feeling really low. And he says, I was like in yeshiva, but also dabbling in real estate. And he says, one day I closed a deal. It was like my first decent sized deal that I ever closed. And the commission on this deal is $35,000. He's like, I wasn't feeling really great about myself, but $35,000, that'll cheer you up. And he comes out of the deal and he feels really good. It finished, it closed. He's getting his check in a couple days. He really feels on top of the world. His phone rings. He looks down and it's his Rebbe from high school. Picks up the phone, he says, hi Rebbe, how are you? And his Rebbe says, Shlaimi, can you come over to my house? I, I want to talk to you. He says, sure Rebbe, like, what's, what's going on? He says, it's not a phone conversation. Can you do me a favor, just come on over to my house? Sure. Shows up to his Rebbe's house, and his Rebbe sits down with him. And his Rebbe says, Shlaimi, you remember this guy who used to be in your class in yeshiva? And he says, yeah. And his Rebbe says, this guy fell onto really hard times. He racked up credit card debt, and I'm trying to collect from various people who used to know him a couple dollars, maybe a thousand dollars. Is there any way that you could help with this campaign? maybe commit to $500 or $1,000. And he says, how much is the credit card debt? How much are you trying to raise, Revy? And Zerby says, it's not a lot of money, but it's not a little amount of money. It's $35,000. And the guy stops for a second. And he says, Revy, your campaign is over. I'm gonna send you $35,000. And Zerby's like, you're gonna send me $35,000? Where do you have $35,000? He says, don't worry, 
Hashem orchestrated for this guy to get out of debt. $35,000 is coming your way. He goes ahead and he calls his boss and he says to his boss, listen, you know that deal, we closed, it's finished, my $35,000, here's the name of a tzedakah. Just wire the money straight to them. His boss says, are you sure? 100%, send it over to them. They send the money over and the guy says to me, within two weeks, I was on my way to becoming engaged to the girl of my dreams. There is a secret. The secret, says Ravelli Lapian, is not a secret that's saved for any one person in particular. It's a secret that any person can access anytime you want. The secret is, don't live by your nature. Bend your nature. Tefillah is such an important thing. We can't take tefillah for granted, especially during those auspicious times. Tuba of is an auspicious day for tefillah for Shaduchim. We're living in unprecedented times where people are struggling with Shaduchim more than ever before. This Tuba of, there's an amazing movement. And there's a website called tubaoftogether.com where hundreds of thousands of people, this Tuba of, August 16th at 10 a.m., are stopping whatever they're doing around the globe to daven for each other. And tefillah by itself is so powerful. When it's with a rabbim, it's like amazing, it's mind-boggling. And when you have people davening for other people, that's just out of this world. But this tuba of August 16th at 10 a.m., I want to ask you to go a step further. Three things. One is daven. Daven real tefillos. For somebody that you know that needs a shidduch. For somebody who's in a shidduch, for somebody who's struggling with shidduchim, why not include some people who are struggling for some other things as well? We have, we're, we're globalizing tefillah. Let's do this all at the same time. The second thing is be proactive. Dabar al-Bani so do something proactive. Read a shidduch that day. Let's read a shidduch. You know somebody, send them, send them a WhatsApp. Get, prepare yourself to read a shidduch on Tuba of. Let's get things moving. Let's get those, let's stop talking. Let's get moving. And the third thing is let's transcend. Let's take this to the next level. Commit now that on Tuba of morning at 10 a.m., you are gonna do something in your life that is unprecedented, that's not normal, that's not natural, that you're struggling with. Commit now to do something that's out of your ordinary. Whether it's davening every morning, whether it's getting up a little earlier, whether it's deleting an app on your phone, whether it's deleting a friend who's not really a good influence on you, whether it's committing to be Mechazik Shabbos or Kashras or something that you know deep down in your heart that you're struggling with. Let's kick down those doors in heaven. Let's turn to the Abishter and say, listen, we get the message. There's a normal balance of natural, but we're not natural this year. This tuba of, we're doing something unprecedented because we live in unprecedented times and unprecedented times call for unprecedented reactions and actions. Do something that you know is hard for you. Nothing to do with your friend, for you specific. Let's daven, let's read those shaduchim. And let's do something, a commitment on Tuba of, that's gonna carry us from now at least until Yom Kippur. For that amount of time, I will not, I, or I will, and make sure that you stay firm on whatever your commitment is. And in that chus of the Rabbim mobilizing, of people davening for each other, and being proactive to help out other people. But more importantly, to do something for yourself, to take your own life to the next level. We should be zeichet, to share in each other's sanchas. That we should dance at each other's weddings and the weddings of our children and enagach, our grandchildren, all together, b'simcha, as bigger and better people. 
On Friday, August 16th, Tuba Av join over half a million Jews from across the world uniting together for Shaduchim. To find out more about the special project, please visit tubaavtogether.com. At tubaavtogether.com, you can watch many more inspirational videos, download the Tehillim to be said on Tuba Av Together, and submit your names for tefillah for absolutely free. Please, share this video with friends and family, and let's make it Tuba Av Together.